Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to do this beautiful, uh, this is Sunset, uh, a little farm house in Ipswich that I saw one night driving home uh, after painting in oil. Beautiful sunset just begged for a watercolor. All right, we're going to do this, uh, paint the sky, a little bit of really yellow and cad red mixed into that. Uh, start off with more, more water on the top. So you, you want the top to be lighter. Now I'm going back with a little more Aurelian yellow because mine was too, was washing out to the paper. But basically Aurelian yellow and cad red will give you a nice orange tint to that sky, okay? That's all, a little heavier on the bottom towards the horizon. All right, this is just uh, ultramarine mixed with a little bit of Windsor blue. And I'm staying away from the orange. Obviously, it's still wet and coming down. So I want to, uh, I don't want those to run together. All right, you want a lot of color in here, so don't be afraid to mix that uh, ultramarine. Don't be cheap. Don't be a cheapo. Get some pigment in there. So that's a curvature of a hill. The house is up on a hill. The sun is setting, in, you know, uh, actually, you know, behind there. So it's, there's a shadow on that hill on the rise. And this is where the hill breaks right here. So the sun is, I mean, the shadow is obviously on the hill and then not on the front where the, the land is leveling off. So it curves up towards the house. So bring it down with the, with the blue and then uh, just at the bottom there, you know, this is all snow. So you, you can see that, you know, the shadow is, is ending there, but there's pieces that are still in shadow and pieces that are not. So you want to break up that line where the, the shadow and the snow, uh, the shadow is not reaching the rest of the level part of the snow. All right, I don't know if that makes sense. But <laughs> all right, I hope it does. So now there's little pieces of snow that are uh, in, sh you know, that make in shadow. You know, snow is going up and down in little little spots. You know, almost like someone was walking through there, but just little pieces in the snow. And then over here in the front, same thing. I'm just throwing the throwing it to get the little spots, and then I'm going in uh, with a brush and spreading them out. Take your time. All right, I'm, I'm going back up here and putting some more ultramarine. Uh, I want to get that nice and deep, deep blue. Pretty much dried there, so I want to just put another layer on. The reason I painted that blue house, the only reason I left that blue was to, um, put some snow on the roof. All right, so we're gonna go in. This, these are backlit, these are silhouettes now against the, against the sky. And now what this is, is ultramarine blue mixed with uh, quinacridone sienna. And then I hit it with a, uh, a dab of cadmium red. So it's a very warm dark. And it's warm because the sky is so warm. That warm light is coming down and hitting this reflected uh, into the dark color. Okay, so we're just, everything's in silhouette. So there's, this whole house is in silhouette, but there's a little snow on the roof that I wanted to leave uh, just to give it a little more form and a little more interest. Okay, so there's the house and it's setting in you know, surrounded by bushes and, and a little crevice there. We'll get that in. All right, there's a barn next to it here. Again, this is just in silhouette. Ultramarine and quinciana will give you that beautiful dark. And then uh, a dab of red will warm it up, cadmium red. You can see this, I'm putting a little extra red in there. You can see how now, it's hot in the video, it look, everything looks black, but you can see I added that red. Like the barn is sitting up on the hill, but there's a you know, crevice down here that 
making a shadow. There's all bushes and bushes and trees and shrubbery that's that's filling in that space. So there's a car in the driveway here. We're going to paint around the car carefully. Yep. And then there's a nice dark shadow under the car. The wind, the rear windshield is dark. Really the only detail here. But it's nice. It, it, it gives you a sense of home, you know, that somebody lives there. There's a car in the driveway. Okay. The tail lights are showing. A little bit of the tires. All right, that's all you need. All right, so this is all, it's pretty easy now. Don't get caught up in all the detail, you know. This is all basically a silhouette, you know, everything shrubbery. And from here you can keep a pretty dry brush, you know. Uh, everything you do is uh, is in silhouette, so there's no, it's not much detail, but it, it's a lot of fun to do. So you can see, just smudge that paint around and it looks like a bush, it looks like you know, a tree, we're going to get those big trees in, but uh, here's a, here's an evergreen in the silhouette. It just happens to be the same shape as the brush. So you flatten it down, you can run those together. There's a, a lean-to over here, probably filled with firewood or something. And you just have shrubbery and all kinds of this little little tree growing here. Uh, I put that dark in there and I'm going to surround the dark with some orange to show the fringes of that tree. The light is lighting the sides of the tree. Okay, so we're going to put the tree in. Now what I want to do is I just want to show you. You could take a pencil if you want and just sort of sketch in the outline of that tree very lightly so you get the shape of it when you have something this big you know it's important so you want to get these just get an idea for yourself if, if it you know you don't you're not painting portraits of these trees so you don't have to worry about it but you might want to just you know sketch it in until you get really confident with it okay all right, now we're going to take a nice pointed brush and start putting these trees in. I'm going to speed this up a little bit for you so you don't this nothing more boring than watch somebody paint a bunch of branches. <laughs> uh, but take your time with it. You know, it's a beautiful practice. And uh, like you, you've heard me say many times, you know, a lot of students really don't take the time to finish the trees, you know. They get these main trunks in and then they don't do the smaller branches. And in a painting like this where it's all silhouetted against the sky, you know, you really need a lot. You need a lot of um, detail. You need a lot of detail against the sky here with these trees. So take your time and enjoy it. You know, get a nice sharp brush and you can really feel the branches Feel the twisting, the angles, you know, the whole thing. It's wonderful. Enjoy it. I'll just let you watch this, so it's just, it's not much to say, you know, just use a sharp brush and, uh, you know, t look at the, you know, look at the photo for inspiration. You're not trying to do a portrait of the tree. You're just trying to get, you know, the gesture. So look at the main branches and try to get something like that in. Don't, you know, like I say, you don't have to do a portrait of the tree. If you want to do a little more sketching with a pencil, and get an idea, but don't get tied into it. You know, you don't have to, it, it, you know, the details are not that important. You just want to 
get a tree that looks uh, like it belongs here on this little farm, you know. But it's a big, important part of this painting, you know. It really gives you a sense of home, you know, a sense of... It's very meditative, you know. You know, you can skip ahead if it's, if it's uh, too much for you. It's a lot of the same stuff, but notice when I put a branch in, I always curve the end of it. You know, there's always a, a roundness to it as they join. taking a lot of time on this because this is the main, you know, this is a, the big tree, it's a main tree in the painting, so it's important. And it takes time to do all these branches, you know. So enjoy it, don't, don't get uh, impatient about finishing it. Just gonna let you watch. As I said, if you get bored, you know, watching this, just skip ahead. But I left it in because I, I think a lot of people like to, uh, you know, like to watch the development of the tree. And it takes time. So I'm going back in uh, to the tree, and what I'm doing here is I'm, I mixed up a much lighter value of a, sort of an orangey color. Uh, it's, it's sort of the sky color, but deeper, you know, the cad red and a really yellow, maybe a touch of uh, quinacridone sienna in there. And I'm putting in a bunch of these light branches, and what the light branches do is f make form to your tree. You know, they, they show as branches in the background on the back side of the tree, the, looking through the darker branches onto these lighter branches. So it starts to give you some distance and form in the tree, which really works well. Put some orange around the, the dark trees like a halo, you know, really works well. You can't put too many, so just enjoy yourself and get in there and, you know, change the value. The val As I say, the value gives you some nice form on the trees. That works really well.
putting some really light uh, orangey stuff up there and actually putting some dots which is suggesting the leaves on the tree you know the old leaves hanging on for the winter uh, part of the winter that is there so uh, and it, it gives it a little bit of substance you know on the tops of the trees so don't overdo it but just enough you know just suggestion of these leaves looks good Just dots of color. You know, you can shape them like leaves, but they're in the distance, so. So you can see the silhouettes of the, sort of the leaves that I did with the orangey color. And I'm putting some more branches in here, some more trees. The ton of trees, a great exercise for you to do those trees. Big part of so many landscapes, you know, so many. Putting in a bunch more trees here. All right, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit uh, more. Uh, you can still watch the trees. There's just so many trees, and I, I thought you might enjoy it uh, and learn from it, you know? So I'll leave it in, but I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because it's pretty much all the same. Just taking a nice pointed brush, starting very very thin at the at the end of the branches and then pr putting a little pressure on as you come down to make the branches of the trunks much thicker at, as they come closer to the earth okay I right, here and there I'm going to create a little mass of uh, you know it might be branches it might be leaves stuck together but what it'll do is add a, a little bit of a block where you can add a little color to it and make it a little more interesting uh, in the middle of all these branches and leaves and so forth, okay? Again, starting very thin, getting darker, and putting some lighter trunks. You know, the lighter branches go in the back. They end up in the background and give, you, give the painting more form, okay? All right, we're just filling up this whole, all this space with more trees and more branches.
can see that mass I made with a little, little more red in, in it, you know, adding a little more interest to that, to the mass of branches and leaves stuck together. Putting a few pigeons up in the sky, adding some uh, more dark, you know, crevices and so forth. And all right, and finally, I'm going to end up with this shrubbery in the front here. It's a little patch of shade, a bunch of branches sticking up. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that tree exercise. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you again very soon.